welcome. My name is Ilyasha Pete. I'm with the Leadership Development Specialist team. It's so amazing to see so many friendly faces out there. And I see we have little visitors like Linda son. Welcome to you as well. The CEN team is just deeply honored and humbled to have participated in ushering these groups through their, this part of their leadership journey. While we've hoped that we provided you with the tools and support and the inspiration and the partnership and the information and the lasting friendships that really are propelling you forward, please know that you have been a part of our development and learning process as well. We want to welcome you to the CEN family today, tomorrow, and always. Now I'd like to introduce uh, two partners in crime. They're, part, they're very talented young women and they're, they're very creative and they're part of our leadership specialist team. And that is Yanira Guzma and Kosaria Henderson. Welcome. Good afternoon, everybody, or evening. I guess we're here, here already. Good evening. Again, my name is Kulzaria Henderson, and I am a Senior Leadership Development Specialist at CEN. Good evening, everyone. I am Yanira Guzman, a Leadership Development Specialist as well here at CEN. And to start off today's program, we here at CEN, we'd like to start off with a land acknowledgement. We think it is important to give reverence and honor to those that walked lived, thrived on this land before the devastation and genocide of colonialism, which is what you see up at the top on the left. We are gathering on stolen land. We live on stolen land and it is sacred land. After colonialization, we've seen the re forced relocation for two reservations. It's what you see there in the middle. Today, I reside in Livermore area, Tri-Valley of California, and I reside on the Muwekma Ohlone land. We still have descendants to this day of all the native peoples, and we want to make sure that we honor them, their language, their culture, and their spirituality that they bring today. So let's take a moment, and in the chat, there is a link there if you'd like to go ahead and find out on which land you reside on and acknowledge and provide honor to the land as well. Go ahead and like to then pass it on to my colleague, Kulzaria, and she is going to give you some more knowledge about the ideal principles that we practice here at CEN. Thank you, Yanira. So many of you probably know this already, but C CEN really thinks of the foundation work that we do with nonprofits and with leaders like yourselves is, is super important. And one of those main principles we think of is what we called IDEAL, which stands for Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, Access, and Liberation. So for inclusion, CEN believes it's a universal human right. It moves beyond diversity and towards creating an equitable environment where the richness of ideas, backgrounds, and perspectives are harnessed. Inclusion is the act of creating space where each person is authentically valued, respected, and supported. Inclusion is belonging, agency, and ownership. Diversity. Our different identities, such as age, race, ethnicity, gender, socioeconomic status, physical and mental ability, sexual orientation, spiritual practices and beliefs, employment status, geographic location, and many, many other characteristics. Diversity encompasses all. For equity is when a person or a group receives unique opportunities needed to reduce or eliminate barriers. It, it is a, um, it's, equity has been demonstrated. It is a process that begins by acknowledging an unequal starting place. And, it's a, and it works to correct and address that imbalance. Equity ensures that people have the opportunity to grow, contribute and develop regardless of their identity. Equity is not equality. It's about getting people what they need. Access, also referred to as accessibility. This refers to the equitable right, engagement, or entry for everyone, regardless of their human ability. For organizations, it refers to how they encompass and celebrate characteristics and talents that each individual brings. It is about representation for all. Access refers to engagement, information, and decision 
decision making. And lastly, liberation. The gaining of equal rights or full social and economic opportunities for a particular group, including the protection from abuse or exploitation. It is ultimately freedom from oppression, allowing one to be their whole self. Liberation is showing up as your whole self. So thank you so much. <laughs> and many of you already have heard these. Um, we, we're now gonna go into our breakout rooms and we'll have a little time together. And we're gonna ask you um, to share a little bit about yourself. So the, uh, the question is up on the slide. Um, and it is, if you had to, uh, it, you're gonna share your name, your pronouns and the organization and answer the question. Yamira? Yeah. yeah, so we are going, we welcome you to go into your breakouts. You will have about four minutes. The breakouts consist of about two to three individuals. So you should each have a minute to respond to these questions. Um, we do ask that you stay in the breakout until you are requested to come back to the main session. Um, stay there the whole time. Oftentimes, we often hear we do not give you want more time. So please stay there. We're going to go ahead and do a quick modeling of what we'd like for you to do in the breakout session. So I will go ahead and I'll just start. Um, so my name is Yanira Guzman. I use she, her, ella pronouns, and I work with CEN. And if I had a talk show, who, my first guest would be my grandparents from both my maternal and paternal side because I never got to meet either of them and I would love to hear their stories. All right. Um, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and ask that you go to your breakout rooms and um, answer those questions for us. Hello and welcome back. It's so funny to see people come back into the room because they're usually smiling. I have a question for you. I'm sure some of you might want to share what your answer was to the question. Who came to mind for you? I am going to go to Sarah first and if someone else wants to speak, let me know in the chat. Sarah, okay, Sarah and Linda, let's go. Okay. Um, well, I had two answers. My first for the moment answer was was Oprah because Oprah. So there's that. Right. But then in the conversation we had, um, it was really linked around family, and I think spurred on by Yanira talking about like the the family she hadn't gotten to spend time to, with or meet. And I have a bunch of grandparents who I either didn't really know when I was an adult and could ask them good questions, or never met. And I would be so interested to just spend time with them and talk with them and get to know more about their experiences. That was me. Perfect. Linda? Actually, Guillermo that wanted to share. Um, I'm, if, I, if I had a talk show, it would have been my dad, my new dad, actually, Ganga, because he's a pretty cool guy and, and nice. And, he, and he's funny with telling his jokes and stories. Oh, I think you just won my heart. <laughs> that was absolutely precious. Thanks so much for speaking. I know adults that couldn't have done what you just did. That was very inspiring. So now I have a, the distinct honor and privilege of introducing our board chair. He's the most innovative, supportive, and compassionate man and leader that I've worked with in over 20 years on boards. He's, he's, he's like no other. When he's not volunteering with CEN, I'm sure he has other things that he does too, but when he's not volunteering with us, he is an audit and assurance partner with Hood and Strong LLC, and they're based out of San Francisco Bay Area. He served as the firm's managing partner for 10 years, and he established the firm's not-for-profit not, not, not niche in about 1990. Without any further ado, I introduce you to Robert. Some of us call him Bob Raffo. Thank you very much, Illy. That was a, a very, um, very flattering, uh, undeserved um, uh, introduction, but thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everyone. 
Um, my name, as Illy said, is Bob Raffo, and I am the chair of the board of uh, directors of CEN. And I'm honored on behalf of the entire board, on behalf of the entire CEN team, to welcome you to our gathering tonight. We have been anticipating this event for quite some time, and while we are still virtual, it is wonderful to have the opportunity to get together and to celebrate. And tonight is indeed a celebration. Tonight, we gather to celebrate not one, but two classes of our Leaders Institute. Class 14, which has just wrapped up its sessions, and Class 13, which completed its sessions a year ago, but because of the pandemic, was um, not able to have a formal graduation. So we celebrate both of them tonight. Tonight is all about the graduates. And my goodness, what a tremendously powerful and impressive group of people we are honoring tonight. So to the graduates, congratulations. The other day when I was preparing these comments, I recall seeing in my local community paper um, where they had asked people to submit pictures of graduates. And they were graduates from kindergarten and grammar school and high school all the way through college. And that got me thinking about how graduations continue throughout our, all of our lives. The difference is that when graduations occur in our work lives, it occurs because we individually and freely make a conscious decision to expand our knowledge of how to grow personally and to make an impact. And this is what we are celebrating tonight, your decision, whenever and however it came about to grow, but not grow in a selfish way, to grow in a way that we will, that will have an untold impact on our community, our society, and all of those individuals who you will touch through the talents and skills that you have continued to develop. CEN is honored to have been a participant in your journey to increase your impact on society. We hope that what you have experienced in Leaders Institute, in, the, in, in your Leaders Institute cohorts, will continue to influence you, your lives in subtle and not so subtle ways. You are who we honor tonight. To those non-graduates here tonight, family, friends, supporters of the graduates, CEN friends, CEN funders, supporters, board members, congratulations as well. Congratulations to each of you because through your support, whether it be moral, mental, fiscal, strategic, or simply being there to listen, you have helped usher these leaders through the door to increase their already impressive impact on the most cherished sector of our society, the nonprofit world. And finally, to the CEN team. We have said this many times, but we must say it again. Your devotion to the success of each of these graduates is awe-inspiring. So to all, hang on because these graduates are going to take our community to a whole new level of caring and impact. Congratulations to all. And now I have the extreme pleasure to introduce you to CEN's Chief, Finance, Chief Executive Officer, Larissa Robido. Thank you, Bob, and welcome everyone. I'm Larissa Robido, the CEO for the Center for Excellence in Nonprofits. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate two extraordinary cohorts, Leaders Institute Class 13 and 14. These two groups are made up of extremely devoted local nonprofit leaders, and many of us are keenly aware of the unique skills and fortitude it takes to be a nonprofit leader, even in the easiest of times or the easier times. These leaders we honor tonight not only led their important organizations while attending our intensive program, but they did this through a global pandemic, a crisis of great magnitude, difficulty, fear, and pain, as all of you know. And as we worked with these leaders over the last two years, we witnessed their acts of incredible bravery, care, strategic business approaches, crisis management, and absolute dedication to their organization's mission. These leaders stepped forward for their communities at heroic levels, adjusting business models, creating alternative service delivery approaches, holding online events, quickly learning new things like the ins and outs of PPP loans and the extreme difficulties and complexities sometimes of the furlough and the furlough process. 
and the emotion behind that. They supported their staff members, always putting themselves last while balancing their own family's needs. All of this through environments of increased anxiety, heightened fear, and painless full loss. Most nonprofits struggle to keep reserves of more than a few months, as many of us know. And these leaders worked through the pandemic with the added pressure of knowing that one wrong move or lack of movement could mean their organization shutting down. Many of these leaders tonight experienced personal, personal or professional loss as either family members or people they served became severely sick with coronavirus or worse, passed away from the virus. These were scary times with great unknowns and the trauma was always present. These leaders kept coming back, attending our sessions, engaging together in truth and in courage. They demonstrated boundless commitments to the principles of ideal. They engaged in deep discussion about racial inequity, current injustices and white supremacy, learning with and even teaching each other every step of the way. These women and men did not let what they were facing take them over. And I know there were days it was very hard. Fueled by the incredible love for the people they served, they continued to develop themselves to ensure that they could be as effective as needed for the demands of their position and their organization's needs. Please know that in no way was this easy for these folks. The strength this took is very hard to measure. In many ways, I feel in working with these cohorts over the last two years that we witness greatness the best of the human condition, service to and for others while in the time of great fear, and even at times at their own personal expense. I wanna thank the CEN staff for all of their incredible work, remarkable work over the last year and a half. Shana, Jen, Illy, Kosaria, Yanira, Mona, and Allison, you move towards all the challenges we were faced with, with great courage. You led with empathy and exemplified brilliant ingenuity. Because of your work, CEN was able to serve more nonprofit professionals this year than ever before, and all through this challenging crisis, something that all of us as a team, I know we will never, ever forget. We adjusted our service delivery model, enhanced curriculum, gave out more services at no cost, quickly connected folks to resources they needed, increased our geographic imp impact, serving many people out of state, increased the frequency of our offerings, created new offerings, and always made time for people that reached out in need. All while knowing there was a lot on the line, the pressure was incredibly high. You demonstrated great vulnerability by sharing your fears and pain with one another. You leaned on each other and you looked out for one another through it all. It is because of this we were able to get through and to grow and to serve those that needed us more than ever before. I want to thank this team for their unbelievable service and it's been an honor to work with you through this. A big thank you to Bob Raffo, our dedicated board president and our board of directors for their unending support, their trust and their engagement during the pandemic. We at CEN also want our funders and the foundations that supported us to know how much we appreciate their care and their investment as we serve the local nonprofit community. We could not have met the needs without you. A big thank you to the guest speakers that came to the Leaders Institute program, telling your stories about leadership and to the executive coaches for your time and expertise and support of our leaders. So I invite all of us to think about something. During such a trying period, where would our communities be right now without their local nonprofit organizations? How many people would have suffered? How many more people would have suffered? What would we have done if our local nonprofit leaders had not stepped forward? The work is certainly not done and the needs and issues in our society can continue. But I am deeply grateful for the leaders in these cohorts, for the thousands of nonprofit professionals out there that serve every day, that leaned into the fear for others. We, they, they made such impact during this pandemic. 
I also feel in many ways that over this harrowing year and a half, our sector has found its voice. Its value cannot be ignored. And our sector is recognizing and even evolving that it needs to improve old systems that need to be changed or even dismantled. Great change for our sector is coming. A new generation of leadership has been born and I'm very inspired by the insight and truth that they stand in. So join us in celebration today. It is this type of joy and celebration that the healing can happen as we emerge out of what has been a dark and challenging time. We share this joy with you all today in celebration for the graduates with music and dancing and testimony. Congrats classes 13 and 14 and thank you for all of our, from all of our communities. And carry with you always that when you were called upon during one of the biggest crises of our time, you stepped up in heroic ways. Thank you. It's now my honor to introduce a great leader, Shana Peet, CEN's Director of Curriculum and Community Partnerships, as she shares her experience as a Leaders Institute participant. She audited the program as a CEN staff member last year. Shana? I'm Shana Pete, and I'm the Director of Curriculum and Community Engagement for CEN. And many of you know that I work here with my sister, Ellie Pete. She and I share a mother who has uh, served as a nonprofit executive. And we have service in our DNA. I really got it from both sides of the, parent, of the family, to be honest. Um, after moving here to the Bay Area, we both found ourselves working as executive directors. Um, Illy was at a 125-year-old organization. It was well-resourced and had a great, you know, long-standing reputation. And I found myself at a startup with limited, you know, more limited financial resources and vast human resources in the way of volunteers. And it was a time. <laughs> it was a time. And I remember the long hours and not seeing Illy very much because we were both just working all the time. And one rare day when we got together for a family dinner, I looked at her and I saw a light in her. And it was almost as if she had unlocked some sort of secret to the nonprofit universe, right? <laughs> you know, usually we would get together and kind of lament the things that were going on, the challenges that we faced. And I just remember this particular day as we ate dinner and we talked, the issues that she had struggled with on the job, and I had to in my own way, uh, now had solutions and they had paths forward. And I remember literally taking notes, you know, uh, and that conversation led to a few more conversations. And finally, I was like, Billy, where is all this confidence? Where's all this wisdom coming from? Right, what, what is happening? And her answer was really simple. It was CEN. And she had basically fallen in love with CEN. She had taken about every class that was offered and enrolled in the eight month Leaders Institute cohort program. And I witnessed firsthand how it affected her confidence and it built a network of support around her that was a game changer. And I, I wanted that. <laughs> so um, not too long after that, and maybe because she had taken like every workshop that we offered and then Leaders Institute and practically could have like facilitated it by that point anyway. Uh, she learned that there was an opening at CEM and was able to join the team. And then six months later, I got a call that there was an opening. And the rest is history. We both um, happily have, have been working here ever since. And um, just going to fast forward a little bit. Basically, you know, I was an LDS conducting many of our workshops and programs. And I had the pleasure of being a part of Leaders Institute Class 13. So I had the unusual experience of having a foot in two worlds. I audited this experience while serving as part of CEM staff. And as a former ED, I thoroughly related to and could remember the weight of the position of nonprofit executive. 
you know, it is a lonely, lonely existence. And at times it feels like you're adrift at sea. You're not exactly staff because you're their leader and ultimately you report to the board. So um, you're out there on your own. And Leaders Institute provides a safe harbor. And within this experience, we are exposed to a range of hard skills, soft skills that are based in nonprofit leadership. And they change the game. You know, when you find yourself at a crossroads or you're unsure of what to do, these, these skills that you're being exposed to can help you get to where you need to go and do so in a way that you feel good and confident about. And during this experience, we assess our leadership skills and we receive candid anonymous feedback from uh, the people we work closest with on those skills. And I promise you that is not easy. <laughs> and most importantly, uh, we have each other. We're able to build a really strong bond as we share the details of professional gains and strains. <laughs> and um, that can eventually lead to personal, you know, sharing your personal battles or your personal wins. And through it all, we hold each other. We hold each other. And the deep bond that we share is transformative. Now, when the pandemic hit, we all retreated behind our masks, or if possible, we uh, went to our homes, but we continued to make time for one another. And I don't know about the rest of the group, but for me, this was a lifesaver. Even auditing, you know, LI, it was a lifesaver. And what it did for me was it let me know that it's okay to be scared. You know, we don't know what we're facing. And it reminded me that we need to keep pressing through that fear in order to meet our missions and to serve our clients and our staff. I wouldn't have been able to do it and do it so well, frankly, <laughs> without the members of Leaders Institute. When I think about Leaders Institute 13 and 14, three words come to mind. <clears throat> and those words are selfless brave and present. And I say selfless because in the early days of COVID, I witnessed the sharing of resources, right? At a time where people were hoarding toilet paper, right? <laughs> and none of us knew what the future would hold or if we would even have the resources to meet that future when it arrived. I saw this group open up and be, be um, very generous with one another. I saw people who were tired and stressed, not only make the time to keep meeting every month for our formal meetings. When we got together, I could see they had remained connected in the space between our meetings. I don't mean that like lazy or one-sided way of being connected. Um, when folks would turn up, they would have inside jokes and little follow-up checklists and results that they would report about the contacts they had had since we last saw each other. So, you know, being the skeptic, I wondered if the world kind of grinding to a halt suddenly made this kind of thing, this, this level of connection happen, right? Was this kind of a one-off? <laughs> but then, you know, the transition from Leaders Institute class 13 to 14 helped me understand it was not a one-off. There is truly some sort of magic <laughs> that happens in these groups, and it is breathtaking. And I remember Illy describing that, and I only wish that I had had that during my time as an executive director. But nonetheless, um, having it you know, just after that time, I still cherish the experience just the same. Brave. That's another word that surfaces for me. The people being celebrated today are fearless. They tackle complex, often systemic issues on the daily while juggling clients, <clears throat> board members, <laughs> uh, staff, 
volunteer matters, budget concerns. They are dealing with 2020, 2021, and all that that means, right? All while showing up for friends and family and their own communities, because they don't just go home and kick their feet up. They're the types that get involved. And they do it with grace and with innovation and a level of expertise that is out of this world. And I commend them for that. Basically, I use the word present. And this is what I think of with uh, Leaders Institute. Um, I've seen the members of this group go to bat for each other with the ferocity of a mama bear protecting her young. And I know that if you come for one of us, you come for all of us in LI. <laughs> and at the same time, I've watched as we give and receive instructive critique or feedback, right? And tough love when it's, when it's the right time. And we share suggestions and personal experiences, personal experiences, including what not to do <laughs> in certain situations, right? Which is very important. And frankly, when we didn't know where to turn or we didn't know what the next right step was, we held each other. We held each other. And, you know, it reminds me of something I heard in worship one day. Our faith leader was like talking about the ministry of presence, right? And then it's not always about being an expert. It's about being present. And we work. I am so proud to be a member of this siblinghood that we have going on uh, with Leaders Institute. Haley, I finally made it in. Hey. Uh, and I just wish I had all the time in the world to share with you how I've per personally witnessed how the investment in leadership development in our industry pays off a hundredfold and stands to ensure that we maintain and encourage our current leaders as they are inspiring the next generation to step up and step into the fold. Thank you to each and every one of the graduates. And I am just tremendously excited to watch your light shine brighter, brighter and um, bigger in the future. Thank you. And now I have the pleasure of welcoming the graduates to share with you in their own words what Leaders Institute has meant to them. So to have the guidance and resources of CEN, both in terms of curriculum and training, um, that combined with just amazing people having both uh, role models in those of you who shared as it, in my experience as part of cohort 13, as well as uh, the mentorship that you provided in addition to those of you at, at CEN. Um, I can say unequivocally and without doubt that I would not have been able to successfully complete this final phase of our 501c3 approval nor would I have been able to effectively navigate this last year with my current organization. So now as I take a step back from one org and uh, get ready to embark on this new journey with seeds, um, with all of this that CEN has provided, I sincerely believe that everybody involved is on a true trajectory to thrive. So thanks to all of you who are a part of CEN in all your different ways. Um, you have made this possible. And please know that your efforts have certainly helped me uh, to grow into becoming a better leader. And I think most importantly, into a better person. Leaders Institute, in essence, changed my life. It was through the peer support and the staff that I really found the courage and the wisdom deep inside as a leader. It was through that support that I was able to lean in to my values as a leader of collective liberation, radical love, and equity. I think every day 
for the support that I received through the Leaders Institute that allowed me to make some very tough but courageous and necessary decisions for my life. I wanted to thank the Center for Excellence in Nonprofits, the Leaders Institute. I learned so much in this program and I couldn't have asked for a better cohort of people, leaders in the Bay Area. All of the insights, all of the tools and the leadership skills that we were given through this program were instrumental in me being able to lead my organization through this unprecedented time through this pandemic. I just really wanted to thank everyone uh, for all of the um, work and everything they were able to equip us with through this program. Thank you so much. And I would recommend this program to any leader in the Bay Area. Hi, I'm Karen Molinari with Healthy Cities Tutoring and a participant in the 13th Leadership Institute. I wanna thank everyone at CEN for being such an amazing resource to the nonprofits through their support, guidance, and development of our local organizations. CEN helps sustain and grow organizations providing critical community services, which improve and enrich all of our lives. I wanna thank the exceptional and talented staff, workshop leaders, and coaches that participated in Leadership Institute, as well as the board and funders who keep this vital organization going. The knowledge, insight, and camaraderie that I gained from participating in Leadership Institute is what carried me through some of my most challenging times as an executive director. I often entered our Friday training sessions tired, stressed, and juggling a lot at the end of a busy week. And every time I left rejuvenated with a new perspective and tools that I could immediately apply to help my organization. I can't recommend this highly enough to everyone. This is an amazing opportunity to participate and improve your skills and learn from the experts. I hope you take advantage and utilize all of the services. Thank you. Hi, my name is Laura Hawkins and what the Leaders Institute has meant to me and my organization during the pandemic are so many things. Um, it was great to have a group of people that were in the same boat as I was to bounce things off of and get their creative ideas because it, uh, it was a challenging time and I needed ideas that I could bring to the organization that were going to be a positive experience for us in this very difficult time and I found that there. So I want to thank everybody that was a part of that and it was life changing. Hi, I'm Vinny Aurora, and I'm the executive director of My Digital Tattoo, a nonprofit in Silicon Valley that works with kids, teachers, and families to learn how to be safe, kind, and responsible online. I joined the Leaders Institute as a first time nonprofit CEO, and it couldn't have come at a better time. It was my first time doing this. I was uh, learning a lot, and I had a lot to learn still. And then the pandemic hit. CEN's Leader Institute helped me in three key ways. Number one, it built my network up, and I thought I had a pretty good network, but it built it up stronger and more meaningfully. Uh, it helped me know who to go to for support when needed. I learned about the mechanics of being a CEO, the budget, the strategic planning, managing staff. Um, and then I'll just say one final push, and that is that the staff at CEN really coached, mentored, and offered this continuum of, of just booing of leadership that I'm grateful for. Thank you, CEN. Hi everyone, I'm Linda Prieto, Executive Director of Upward Scholars. I'm part of Cohort 13 with CEN Leadership Institute. And I'm so happy for the opportunity that I had for professional development as part of the cohort. Not only did it help me on a personal and professional level, but it helped me to continue to guide and move my organization forward during such a challenging time as it has been the pandemic. I was really happy that we were able to adapt and move from those in-person meetings to virtual um, conversations and discussions and presentations under the leadership of the CEN staff. They brought in great speakers for us. And I really feel a sense also of connectedness with my cohort where we can continue to tap each other for feedback, advice, um, partnership. And so this has really opened up the doors, I think, for a greater opportunity and benefit. And again, not only to me, but to all the adult immigrant learners that we serve through Upward Scholars. So thank you so much, CEN. It's a pleasure to have been a part of this group. Hi, my name is Lavinia Brandon, and I'm proud to be part of LI13. I wanna thank everyone at CEN for hosting such an incredible class. 
and express my appreciation to all my colleagues for sharing their insight and support. Uh, it's a really special group and I'm grateful for all the guidance and resources that have been collectively shared. Um, Leaders Institute has been truly helpful in so many ways from the workshops and education each month, um, hearing from different professionals in the industry, the access to knowledge and resources, um, some that were familiar to me and others that I'd never heard of before, uh, but especially during the pandemic when organizations, businesses, and we were all just trying to survive and navigate how to best service the community. Um, in these just strange times, it was really comforting to know that we we're not alone. And what was most helpful was knowing that I could tap into such an amazing and experienced group of professionals for that voice of reason when needed. I would highly recommend Leaders Institute for leaders of all backgrounds and experience levels. It's a truly unique and empowering experience, and I'm so very grateful to have been a part of it. Thank you. Hello, I'm Sharon Navarro, Executive Director of Acknowledge Alliance, and I'm here to say that CEN's Leadership Institute was vitally important to me during the pandemic. I appreciated the mentoring I received from the other awesome executive directors in the group, along with the leadership coaching and excellent support I received from Larissa, Illy, and Shana. Thank you so much. The pandemic upended all our lives and I felt very validated, supported, and I had a place to thought partner and problem solve and come out stronger and bring these lessons back to my agency. Thank you very much. This was a once in a lifetime opportunity that I will never forget. The CEM Leaders Institute was um, an incredible experience. There's so much about it that I loved and so much about it that held and still holds value. Um, but I would say the most important piece for me was this cohort of incredible leaders that um, became friends uh, and supporters and encouragers and collaborators. Um, I think as, as a leader, it is so hard to find that and to have that. And um, for me, that is what made this the most valuable and incredible experience. Thank you, CEM. Okay, next we're going to see another series of videos with, from Class 14 to hear about their experience at Leaders Institute. Enjoy. Hi, my name is Mary Carvalito and I'm the Executive Director at Art in Action. I'm grateful to CEN, Larissa, and the incredible CEN team for the Leadership Institute, especially during the past year. This cohort of amazing leaders navigated not only the pandemic, but political divide, social unrest, and racial tension in our communities. Leadership Institute provided a safe place to address these unique challenges and offered helpful tools for us to be authentic, impactful leaders for our organizations. Thank you, CEN. I'm Dawn Coppin. I have been honored and proud to be part of the Leaders Institute this year. I have to say that coming out on the other side of it, my confidence as a leader has definitely increased you know, umpteen fold. And honestly, I've also gained a lot of insight to my own personal values and where that places me as a leader and what that means to be able to move my organization forward, not just in this time, but for the future as well. I would like to give a shout out also to all of the staff at CEN who've been involved as their behavior has truly modeled what good leadership has looked like. They've led with kindness, catching times, and at every turn they have shown what it really means to be a leader of a fantastic organization. So thank you ever so much. I've been proud to be part of this and look forward to doing great things with you and the rest of my cohort. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mahogany Rowland and I want to thank CEN for the Leaders Institute in this program. It has been amazing for me the past eight months and I have three takeaways that I'd love to share that are really important to me. The Leaders Institute program taught me to stand proud in my leadership. 
I've also been really thankful to meet new peers around the Bay Area to build my network. And the biggest takeaway that I'd like to share is I am super excited to move forward and elevate racial equity in all of my leadership decisions for my organization. Thank you to the CEN group and looking forward to more trainings. Thank you. As a first time CEO during a very challenging year, I have felt so fortunate to be a part of Leaders Institute. I've learned so much from both the CEN leaders as well as my fellow participants. I am forever grateful. For nonprofit leadership, this opportunity to take part in the nine month CEN Leadership Institute has really expanded my tools in learning and understanding governance, management, leadership development. But I think more importantly, this leadership journey of growth came at a time where this past year, 2020, ushered in challenges with COVID the economic impact, civil unrest, and while also escalating discussions around social justice, reform, diversity, equity, access, and inclusion. In small communities and abroad, we have and are witnessing emerging risks of injustice with varying degrees and impacts. The experience for me being a part of this process um, listening and learning to the amazing and diverse organizations that took part in the Leadership Institute has really elevated my ability to embrace and bring with me the important understanding of diversity, equity, inclusion, and access in decision-making and communication in my role in leadership as we really all collectively adapt and reimagine the changing landscape of leadership. So I can't thank CEN and the team enough for this amazing opportunity, and I highly recommend it. The Leaders Institute has been incredibly valuable to me throughout this time of COVID. Um, I think for anyone who is a nonprofit executive director, the work can always feel isolating, particularly given the challenges of COVID being able to be around incredibly smart facilitators from the CEN staff and a group of deeply committed executive directors, it consistently gave me an opportunity to step back, to feel community, and to learn some skills that I knew were going to bring my organization and my own personal leadership moving forward and improving. Um, I definitely was able to think strategically about how to best serve my organization. I was able to look at my own leadership skills and think about what to keep and what to consider changing. And I'm walking out of the Leaders Institute feeling like I now have a deep network of fellow executive directors and professionals who are committed to equity and who will continue to push my leadership going forward. Being a part of this year's cohort meant so much to me. And I honestly don't know if I would have weathered the pandemic as a new ED or if our organization would have weathered the pandemic as well as we did without the time that I was able to spend with my cohort and CEN this past year. Um, this has been such a gift for me as an ED and I will really cherish all of the technical things that I learned, but more than that, um, the love and care and support that I received as we were all navigating this time. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be a part of this cohort. Being part of the Leaders Institute, especially during the pandemic, has meant that I'm a part of a community of leaders who are sharing stories, experience, and encouragement that I can learn from, gain encouragement from, and share encouragement with. I've also gained valuable knowledge from access to the teachings and trainings. All of this is helping me grow into a stronger leader for my organization and my community. I can honestly say that it has been a blessing to me uh, to be able to talk with other executive directors and to be able to meet with uh, the staff of the Learning Institute and to be able to think and, 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 and process things that we can't really uh, do with our organization, but we can do in this small setting. And so I want to say it's my pleasure and honor to 
to work with you. And the coach that you give me was extraordinary. Mr. Arvey, I must say that I have been pleased with all the training, all the workshops, and all the documents, the presentations, everything has been just a blessing. Thank you, and God bless you. Hi, my name is Lee Monastery, and the organization I'm with is Cultivating Literacy. It's been such an honor and a blessing to be part of CEN's Leader Institute this year. It's been an incredibly hard year, so it's been amazing to be part of a community of leaders where it's a safe place for us to share areas where we are feeling challenged, stressed, or times of hardship and joy. As a young leader myself, I've gotten to learn firsthand from so many leaders who have been influencing our community for years. I've gotten to challenge myself and reflect deeply on areas where I can grow as a leader. I love CEN's holistic approach where not only am I collaborating with the community, but I also got individualized coaching from an awesome coach who helped me reflect and grow in so many areas. I've loved my experience with CEN. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of such a wonderful community. Leaders Institute is instant impact. It's a wealth of knowledge taught by passionate staff members and guest speakers. I'm confident that I'll take that knowledge into my organization and do good things. I like that we had an interactive, interesting session, even on Zoom, they held my attention. The staff is phenomenal. I recommend Leaders Institute to individuals that's willing to level up for their organization, thank you. What is, what is there to be said after that? <laughs> um, I just appreciate each and every one of these graduates beyond what words can convey. And I thank you for sharing your gifts with us and also sharing these really um, lovely and kind words to support what we do at CEN as well as the board and the, the donors and funders who support us as well. So thank you. Next, we are going to engage in some breakout activity again. And we're going to offer you a chance to get to know each other and to um, interact with one another because building community is what we do. First, you'll be asked to share your name and pronouns, your organization, and in 45 seconds or less, say it with me now, 45 seconds or less, we're going to ask you to share what has inspired you about today's event, All right? So everyone, uh, we're gonna take about eight-ish minutes to do this breakout session. And um, just, we really wanna make sure that everyone in the group gets a chance to speak. So be sure to think about taking space and making space as appropriate. And we look forward to hearing from you when you get back and learning, maybe even in the chat, what has been inspirational for you today. So all of us were in the breakout room. Um, I would like to have a couple people maybe lean in and tell me what they talked about. If you're interested, you please put your hand up in the, in the um, please raise your hand or put the name in the chat. But I'd like to start with Karen. She had a very touching story and she has a, she has a, gr a, gr a, a, a she has a hat on for graduation. So I had to go to her. Well, I said the two things I took away were just reconnecting with all of those who supported um, me um, through a very challenging time. And I uh, thanked the board members who were on the call because really without CEN, I don't know that I would have stayed in my position. And I just really appreciate all the support that they gave me through, again, th to all of us through a very, very challenging time. Um, and as I said, my staff and board probably appreciate that as well. And then I just love the dance party. Like, you know, that CEN reminds us all that it's not all work, that we need to cut loose and have some fun and turn on the music and shake your booty. And I'd like to invite one more person, Irvi Smith. Are you interested? You'll have to unmute. They might have to give you a little help with that. Irvi Smith. Okay, I'm unmuted now. Well, uh, like I said in our chat room, it's just really inspiring to see all these graduates 
and all that they stand for and believe in and are working toward. It makes me feel very proud, both as a sponsor and a nonprofit consultant, to be a part of, the, of this community and see that uh, it's in good hands. Perfect. Thank you so much for the kind words. And I'd like to pass it back to our fearless, amazing, compassionate, powerful leader, Larissa. Thank you, Willie. Thank you so much. So I want to thank everybody for taking the time to come to our celebration. I know a lot of people have been uh, invited to online events and are probably thinking, oh no, another online event. But I really appreciate the commitment. Thank you so much to the leaders. You are incredible people. Thank you for your service. And thank you to the staff, the sponsors, the supporters, and, and everybody that makes this community at CEN whole. Um, please have a wonderful night. And again, look out for our email tomorrow. Thank you, thank you, and take very good care. Now, I have one thing left to say. There is an exciting announcement coming out next week from CEN. It's pretty big. So look out for that as well. Good night. Thank you, CNN. <laughs>